So we're back for another cheeky episode, and today we're making ourselves upside down pineapple cake. <sighs> I know we're making pineapple upside down cake, but come on, this is ridiculous. Ah, there we go, much better. And as I was saying, we're going to be making pineapple upside down cakes. So uh, instead of doing the traditional version with the cherries and the pineapple, we're actually going to be using some rum and pineapple and some beautiful caramelization on the bottom and then that cheeky sponge. So uh, hope you guys and gals are going to enjoy it. So before we start slicing this beautiful pineapple, we need to actually preheat that oven. So we need to preheat it to 350 Fahrenheit or 180 Celsius. So do that now. So with the pineapple, what you want to do is top and tail. So take the tops and the bottom off. And then what you want to do is take your knife and just follow around the edges of the pineapple, just taking that skin off uh, very carefully. So making sure you go all the way around. Though alternatively, you'd be thinking, why are you not using a can? Well, because fresh is best. Of course, why not? So once your uh, skinless pineapple is ready to go, what we want to do is cut this into about a centimeter thick slices. Now, this might be a little bit more than a centimetre thick, but you can cut it however thick you want it. Ooh, cheeky bit for tasting. Mmm, so good. So using about a two, three centimetre ring cutter, we're going to just take out the middle core. Now, a lot of people think these are quite sinewy, they're not very nice. You can actually eat these, they are a little bit tough, or maybe you want to just freeze them down ready for a cheeky smoothie, right? Somehow, I don't think this is quite holy enough, but it's okay. So due to the apple being quite rounded and we have all sorts of like different sizes and shapes, we're actually going to use a little cheeky ring just to kind of measure this up and make sure they're all the same size. Also, make sure you keep the scraps. You can use it for another smoothie as well if you want to or for something else. Or maybe you just want to chow down on it. So eventually you should have some perfect size rings. Don't be rude now. So you want to get yourself a large cake tin. Uh, so this is 26 centimeters by 10 inch diameter. Uh, by eight centimeter, which is three inches. So uh, we're gonna need to butter up this bad boy first. So once it's all buttered up, what we want is some parchment paper. So instead of trying to push it down, I'm gonna show you a little cheeky trick to get this circular very quickly. So what you wanna do is fold it in half to begin with, and then fold it again. So you got a nice beautiful square, and then fold that square in half. So you got a nice beautiful triangle. And then, you know, fold that triangle once again. So what you want to do is basically measure from the center to the edge, and that'll give you a rough idea how far where to tear it. So voila, certainly makes life a lot more easier. So before we put the pineapple rings in here, we're going to need to make that beautiful rum and brown sugar mix. So we're going to need so we're gonna need 100 grams of soft brown sugar or half a cup. Also, we're gonna need 50 grams of unsalted butter or quarter of a cup. And then we're gonna need one shot of gold rum. Two shot, uh, let's make it three. And then put this bad boy onto a medium heat on the stove until the sugar and the butter has dissolved down together and it's looking something like this. A glossy, syrupy kind of consistency is what you're looking for. So bringing back our cheeky tin into the equation, uh, we're gonna pour that beautiful mix, once it's cooled down slightly, into the bottom of the tin. Just making sure it's all coated nice and evenly in the bottom of that tin there. And then grabbing our pineapples, we're gonna carefully arrange a nice beautiful circle all the way around the bottom. And if you can fit one in the middle, magic. And you should have hopefully arranged it just nicely. So we're gonna start making the cake mix. And if you remember to take your butter out, because obviously I did, yeah, obviously I didn't. So uh, if that's the case, you can actually cut this down into little cubes and uh, let the KitchenAid beat it up until it's nice and soft. But we're gonna need 350 grams of unsalted butter or one and a half cups. So once you've softened your butter, you wanna add yourself 350 grams or one cup, three quarter cups of fine granulated sugar or caster sugar for you UK folk. And then you wanna cream that cheeky sugar and butter together for about a couple of minutes until it's nice and smooth. In addition, you want two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Also, as we're using unsalted butter, also don't forget a little cheeky pinch of salt as well in there. Next, you want six cheeky eggs to go in here, add in one by one. Also, bear in mind, once you've added all the eggs to the butter, don't worry, if it looks a little bit like scrambled egg and it's splitting, 
it'll actually come together when we add the dry ingredients, don't panic. So we're gonna need 360 grams of plain flour or two and seven eighths of a cup. Uh, and in addition, we want six teaspoons of baking powder. So that's going straight into that buttery mix. So put it on a low speed, otherwise the flour is just gonna puff up into your face and that should bind together very nicely. And that cheeky batter mix should be looking something like this. Smooth, thick, nice and beautiful, ready to go. So we're gonna pop this straight into the cake tin. And then just grab yourself a little cheeky crank spatula and just spread that beautiful batter out nice and smooth and evenly. So once it's nice and smooth, it's ready to go in the oven. So this is gonna take about roughly 40 to 50 minutes. Also bear in mind, if it's coloring too quickly on the top, make sure you turn it down to about 300 Fahrenheit, which is about 160 Celsius, I think. Now this shouldn't leak, so just in case, just pop it onto a little tray, just in case you do have any leakages, but you should be fine. And then uh, pop this bad boy straight in the oven. So the cake has taken about 50 minutes, which has slightly sunk a little bit, but maybe that's because of too much baking powder. So maybe reduce it down to four teaspoons rather than six, but either way, it's still gonna be very delicious. So let this bad boy rest for about half an hour before turning it out onto a plate. So now that the cake has cooled down, we're gonna actually tip it up upside down. Considering the cake slightly sunk due to the uh, too much baking powder, lesson learned. Sometimes when you double recipes, you need to uh, make sure you adjust the uh, baking powder, but I think we still managed to pull off a delicious, beautiful pineapple upside down cake. Looking fantastic. So I thought I'd give you guys and gals a little cheeky close up of that pineapple upside down cake. And uh, oh my goodness me, look at that beautiful, cheeky cake. So we still managed to salvage it, but uh, I think it's a lesson learned for sure. But either way about it, absolutely spot on. Well, maybe not quite spot on, but almost. So I thought I'd just give you a nice little cheeky cross section of that beautiful cake. And I think maybe it's time to have a little chomp down and have a try out this, see how it goes. So there we go. Not as good as it should be, but it's okay. Lessons are learned here. But I'm pretty sure, flavor-wise, you can't go wrong. Mm. Oh my God. The tang of the pineapple, that beautiful, crisp, fluffy, moist cake as well. Oh my goodness me. As much as I want to improve on this, it's still a very good product, so. Happy days. So that's it for this week, amigos. And considering our cake sunk, we still had a very good quality product overall. So still very happy with that cake. But if you want to get it perfect, just reduce those baking powder teaspoons to about three. That will that will knock it on the head. Um, in addition, if you want to like the video and subscribe to the channel, please feel free to do so. If you want to try out this recipe, I'll be listing it in the description box below. Also, if you want to catch me on Twitch, Tuesday to Friday, 10 a.m. Mountain Time as always, I will be on there cooking some delightful dishes. But until next week, amigas, stay cheeky.